Oh, that's not great. That's not great. Welcome to the 2023 Heartland Mallard Pathfinder P18 CRB. There's a lot of things I really like about this one. There's one thing I don't. We'll get to that in just a second, but uh, let's let's hit some of the really good things about the Pathfinder. One, it's going to be fairly lightweight. You're looking at about 3,700 pounds dry, single axle. So if you have an SUV that can tow 5,000 pounds, unless you know you're really loading this thing up, which you can, because it has a pretty good carrying cargo carrying capacity. Uh, but chances are you'll still probably be able to tow this, which is a huge win. Also, you get great countertop space for being a smaller RV. I really like that as well. Um, and it has Asdell construction. So as far as like an overall build, there's definitely some big wins there. Nice big tires. We'll take a look at that when we go outside. Uh, I also like the layout for being a smaller RV. Right over here is your campsite dinette. I personally really like this because you get to you know eat breakfast and stare out to your campsite. That's really the view you want. So when we're able to do this, that's a big win for me. Definitely love that. And it does drop down into a, a small additional sleeping spot. Uh, we talk about storage. It actually has decent storage overall. I mean, you have some good overhead space. You know, open these up right above the kitchen there. You get some drawers down below, right? You get a th uh, three drawers, which again, in something like this is pretty rare. Normally, normally, you only get two. And some additional storage underneath the sink. So uh, good storage in the kitchen, plus you still have the three overheads over here. So uh, really good storage all the way around. It comes with a TV. That's pretty rare when we're talking about, uh, you know, again, a smaller RV. A lot of times you don't get that uh, amenity. So... I do like the fact that it just comes right with it. You don't have to worry about what size to buy or where to mount it, anything like that. Of course, our AC uh, control will be right here. Well, furnace control as well. Um, but your thermostat, I guess this would be the proper term, is right there. This one has a just like a quick dump feature. I didn't see any other outlets. It, you can close it off, but I'm not sure why you would because I don't think it's really going anywhere. But uh, we did turn it on earlier and it does cool everything down nice and quickly. The bathroom, this is a rear bath, of course, hence the RB. As we take a take a walk back here, take a seat on the old toilet. She moves a little. Uh, it's a plastic bowl. Uh, you know, again, I don't necessarily love that, but um, there is quite a bit of space all the way around. So honestly, once this thing does go, you can probably replace it with a porcelain bowl pretty easily. And I am quite comfortable. They did do a really good job of cutting out the countertop here as well as giving some additional space. Um, so I definitely enjoy that. A little bit different faucet. Um, a very unique look to it. It looks a lot nicer being like a single post and a lot of them that they put in. I, I don't super love the, the aerator design, how it just pokes out. But again, it definitely looks uh, higher quality than a lot of the other ones we see in RV bathrooms. Opening up this space right here, um, I probably could have done without the shelf, personally. I, I would have had a wardrobe go all the way across. I do like that you have the hanging rack there. And, you know, hey, maybe maybe it's for towels. I guess if you want like a linen closet, it makes sense. I, I yeah, you know what? I take back what I said. The shelf was smart. You got to have a spot for your towels. That's not going to be deep enough. I get it. Let's take that back. They did a good job there. Take a step in the shower. Skylight up top. Without it, I, I'm six foot tall. I am rubbing right here. So if you're any taller than that, you're going to have to stand under the skylight. Uh, which will be a little bit close, but honestly, you know, we're doing quick showers in here. It shouldn't be an issue at all. If I turn sideways, yeah, I probably will be fighting the curtain a little bit. Um, you know, once you get that installed, it will be right here. But again, this is, you know, <clears throat> it's an RV shower, folks. Nothing new. You're going to shower up. You're going to wash off. You're going to get out. We're not uh, spending all day in there. So that's not, uh, not a make it or break it for me and probably not for most people watching. All right, and as we come back out into the kitchen, you have the 12 volt ever chill refrigerator. A lot of manufacturers are going to 12 volt. I honestly think it's a pretty good choice just because you get more cubic foot than you would in your standard one. Uh, and you know, when you have solar standard like this one does, you have 110 watt solar, it does help to uh, keep that topped off. Now, 
You also can get the optional inverter on there. I think it's an 1100 watt inverter. So, um, you know, that way you can basically run some of your 120 off of your batteries. Microwave, of course, right up top. And then down below is the furnace. Keep things uh, nice and hot in here, even though we don't need it on a daylight today. We talked a little bit about the kitchen, about the storage. Hood up top here, two burner cooktop right down below. It does have a glass cover. And again, I think they did a pretty good choice. I, I wouldn't have gone any bigger on the cooktop. The round sink, um, I think, is a pretty decent choice as well when we're given the size we have in here. It is quite deep, and that's one of the things I like about the round sinks versus, you know, some of your double bowls. Like, folks, they're only like this deep. Like, you can't do anything with them. They're just for looks. This is actually a little more functional in my mind when you have a small camper like this. And then as we flip it all the way around, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, electrical outlet uh, under the cabinets. And just for common knowledge, it's actually, when you have a, a laminated trailer, it's pretty common for them to install electrical outlets like somewhere in the cabinetry, either here or like on the side, because they don't want to run electrical through the walls because it can be a pain to route everything out and then you lose some insulation value. And if you ever have to troubleshoot it, it's an absolute bear. So that's why a lot of times if you have a laminated trailer, you'll find them underneath the cabinets. Just a, uh, a pro tip there. Taking a look at the front. This is the Murphy bed. Um, you know, a Murphy bed for a lot of people is make it or break it. And a lot of times uh, you have some decent mattresses. Going to be honest, folks, this is not one of the cases. I, I do not care for this one. So you lift this up right here. And, and as you can see, right, this is the big advantage of having a jackknife sofa is all the storage underneath. And then you're just going to drop it down and then move on to the mattress. Now, when you fold this out like so... It's not my favorite mattress in the world. Um, you know, you'll see that, that this side is actually thicker and that's intentional. So they realize there's a little bit of a height difference. Not that it couldn't be overcome with a foam topper or two, but as it sits right now, it is fairly uncomfortable. So again, just kind of know going into it that you might have to do some modifications on the Murphy bed here. Let's talk about the outside features of the 2023 Mallard Pathfinder P18 CRB. Starting off right up front is the power tongue jack. This is obviously a great feature to have just because it makes it so much easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle and it'll save you a few hundred bucks from having to get it aftermarket. Also has a light on there for some added visibility at night. Right behind that, your 220 pound propane tanks with the cover rails for your battery and this I actually really enjoy. This is something a little bit newer that uh, Heartland has come out with and that is the Vault. So I'm really glad they're putting this on here. Essentially, it is going to be a distribution box. Um, if it doesn't have this, especially when you start getting into solar, you have like four positive wires, like four negative wires. You gotta hook them all up to the battery. It's a giant pain in the butt. That just simplifies everything. So literally all you have is this guy right here and then uh, your, your ground right down there. So um, definitely like having that. Also up front here is your uh, Diamond Dutch plating helping protect that front end and the gorgeous three-quarter front cap. Huge fan of that. You get the windshield up there too. I really like the looks of the windshield. I think they did a spectacular job on uh, that front cap as a whole. LED lights there as well. Um, this is part of your pass-through. We'll actually see it when we get on the other side. To be perfectly honest, I want to show you this side, but <laughs> it uses the key alike system and I don't have the keys on me, so I can't get into it. Uh, but there's a bunch of stuff in there. I'll show you when we get on the other side, like the inverter prep, battery disconnect, uh, things like that. Make it right back a little bit further is your power awning with LED light. So you can pop that, have that bad boy come right on out. You can see the LED light strip is on. Uh, great thing about that, because of the way it is sewn into the fabric, it doesn't matter if your awning is completely rolled up like it is right now, slightly extended or fully extended, you can still utilize those lights. A couple outside speakers there. You have the aluminum, what they call hybrid steps, meaning that you have aluminum treads on there, rubber grip, and then you have the foldable grab handle. Now, with so many manufacturers going to a solid step, you have to understand, folks, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, you know, if, if you have, for example, like a deck, like if you're like a semi-permanent location, these are going to be the steps you want. Those fold-out ones aren't going to work. It's just going to be stuck in your door. You're going to have to remove them and then have holes in your floor and have some issues. So something like this, it definitely can be beneficial. Plus, you're not getting all the dirt and water and everything else uh, when you're putting them away. So, you know, again, pros and cons. I personally really like these steps. Going back a little bit further, you have the 15 inch rugged tires. Um, you know, those, they're gonna be a little bit more sturdy, some bigger lugs. So if you are doing uh, a little bit more off-roading, not that 
not that you're going to be, you know, uh, going in the woods too crazy or anything, but um, you know, if you are pulling through, having the bigger tires will be great. And there is a spare tire, which I can show you in just a moment too. Plus with the 15 inch tires, it's a little bit bigger on a travel trailer. So you do get a little bit more ground clearance. Uh, we can take a look at that when, when we go around to the side, because there is something um, I kind of want to show you. But right over here is the outside kitchen. So that of course is our fridge. Griddle, I, I'm really happy that they give a griddle instead of a two burner cooktop. This just flips over by the way, in case you're unfamiliar. So it'll be just like that. Well, if I can line up the holes, um, there you go, just like that. So that'll be your flat cooktop. I definitely prefer this over having a two burner. I'll just use this way, way, way more. You have your TV hookups right over there. Of course, like I said, the propane quick connect underneath, which is meant for this. But again, if you have a favorite grill or something you want to use, you have like a Coleman Traveler or something like that, by all means, use that. Coming around to the back, there is our spare tire, folks, right there. Uh, you also have a square tubular bumper with end caps. And the reason I bring that up is that's a little bit actually more rare in a smaller travel, travel trailer like this. I really like having it just because it allows you to attach things like, um, like a tire, but more importantly, it gives you a spot in which you can store the sewer hose. If we take a look up top, we have prep for two different things, one being your backup camera. Pretty obvious why you'd want that. Just gives you the vision in the back. The other one is ladder. This is a fully walkable roof, folks. A lot of people are under the impression that if it doesn't have a ladder, it means you can't walk on the roof, and that's simply not true. Um, now, granted, if it has a ladder, it generally is a pretty good sign you can walk on the roof, but the opposite's not always true. And in this case, you do have the prep, fully walkable roof. It just uses a telescoping ladder. You can pick it up in the store or order it online, be able to hook that bad boy up and climb right on up there. We dropped underneath, you can see our two terminations right there. Also, the tanks do have 12 volt heat pads on them. Um, so, you know, that'll help uh, in some colder weather. I wouldn't say that this is a, you know, a unit you can take out in, uh, you know, freezing temperatures by any stretch, simply because your valves aren't protected. And even though you have those heat pads, the tanks are exposed as well. But, you know, if it starts to dip down a little bit, like if you're doing camping a little bit later fall, a little bit earlier spring, those heat pads should certainly um, aid in that. Coming back up, a few quick things before we, uh, we roll out here. One of them is going to be your 30 amp power cord plugs in right there, satellite and cable are right down underneath. But, you know, of course, your water hookups. More importantly, though, is a black tank flush. That's a really nice feature to have on a smaller camper like this. And one last thing I do want to hit on, folks, right underneath, um, you will see this one has your steel guard right here. Uh, that's going to be super advantageous in the event of a blowout. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but if it does, that'll help protect that underbelly from all that damage. Now I did promise you a shot of the interior. We can see that. Slam latch baggage doors, by the way, magnetic catch. This is actually pretty cool. This is a, I, I should have pointed this out, probably should have hooked it up, but this right here is a table that connects to the wheel well. So it's actually pretty sweet. Um, maybe we'll get a nice B-roll shot of that, of hooking it up, but. You can connect that and it gives you some a uh, little bit of extra just table or prep space or whatever but on the far side you can see we have a battery disconnect over there uh, we have inverter prep and then we also have a tire pressure monitoring system or tpms prep so that if you want that uh, to be installed you can again it's a great peace of mind to have on any trailer so folks if you're looking for something that's lighter weight you know this one right here the mallard pathfinder p18 crb honestly is a great layout it has beautiful colors Asdell construction on the sidewalls. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. That's a huge advantage to have because it's lighter weight. You don't have to worry about um, you know, water or anything getting in there. Definitely a great product. So if you're looking for it, you want price and availability, just check it out in the description. Till next time, we'll see you later.